This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Wahid Invest, revolutionizing halal investments. Assalamu alaikum, guys. Welcome to episode 81, I believe, or freshly grounded. Um, this episode is brought to you by Wahid Invest, as the last few episodes have been. Um, Wahid have jumped on uh, and partnered with us um, and um, sponsored a few of the episodes, and it's really cool um, that they have done so, uh, you know. Uh, I, I I could talk about them all day, uh, but the team there has been amazing. Um, who are Wahid Investor? Wahid Invest um, is basically a service online, um, and and what they do is they allow you to invest your money. So you upload your money onto onto Wahid, and then they invest your money into halal companies. Um, and so, what do I mean by halal companies? Basically, what that means is that um, they invest your money into companies that are. Um, halal is kind of certified by their board so they have a sharia board and they have a compliance board right and so what their their, their boards do is they check if the company um, deals with gambling alcohol um, adult um, film or anything like that and they don't invest any of your money to those kind of companies and they also have a compliance screening where they they check if um the company that your money is going into um makes their decisions in an islamic way and their contracts are islamic etc so it, it, they, they really check all of that and then they invest your money into those um areas it's really cool because if you have savings sometimes if you have savings and they're sitting in your bank account um you can spend it easily. Um, whereas with Wahid, you can put your money into Wahid. Not only can you save your money there, it's a bit harder to access, which is great. And on top of all of that, um, you can always just pull it pull it back out. So let's say, for example, you're saving for a new car or whatever, put your money into Wahid and you can pull it out whenever you want. Um, that way you don't access it as much. And also uh, your money could actually increase, obviously, because it's um, investing. So don't sacrifice your beliefs to start investing with Wahid. Wahid has helped clients all over the States put their money to work in halal portfolios. And now they are in the UK. Your savings don't need to sit in a bank account doing nothing. You can sign up in minutes, get your account approved instantly and start with as little as £100. It's halal investing the way it should be guys go check out freshlygrounded.com forward slash wahid uh, that's our trackable link um, if you go on it via that then they can kind of see um, who heads over to wahid from us and it helps us keep the podcast running you guys might be able to notice that we are in a we're not in a new studio but we have a new set alhamdulillah um this is the first episode of us with our new set. Um, I was, I've been so keen to do have freshly grounded running with a new set for so long. Um, when we moved out of the old studio, we moved into this one. We had the sofa as like a temporary thing. And, uh, I always wanted it to be temporary and then we started like dragging it and I was like no we need to get a new set so I've always wanted to have armchairs I always wanted to have like really cool like side tables to hang the mics off uh, and we got some shelves coming soon as well inshallah so really excited about that um, so I hope you guys enjoy the aesthetic of this episode a little more than, than, than usual uh, do drop your comments below and let me know what you think also uh, guys we have hit 1 million listens on Freshly Grounded what that's mad like i can't believe it i, I, I just big jazakallah khair. big thank you to everyone who has listened to freshly grounded one a big thank you to everyone who has like helped all of the guests that have been on it um anyone who's ever produced an episode of freshly grounded from two uh, who's produced two episodes mahdi i think produced one episode red who produced like so many episodes at the beginning nate who's producing the episodes nowadays me, who sometimes produces the episodes by myself. Um, everyone, it's been amazing. Anyone who's helped out, Omar has been such a huge help for us to go Like, you guys don't see Omar do anything for us to go because he's so quiet with it. But he honestly, like, in the beginning stages, he helped fund a lot of the equipment. Uh, the studio space is Omar's space and, and, and so much more. So, a huge thank you, guys. One million million listens. I, I can't believe it. We're regularly hitting um, number one in the iTunes store uh, in, in, in our category. Um, so, yeah, huge, huge thanks. Um, this episode is... With with Zahid, um, guys, Zahid is someone I met uh, a few years ago, um, and I actually initially met him because um, I wanted him to model our um, our new line of Izaha. Um, our new like we dropped an exclusive Izaha Iz T-shirt that we collaborated with Samir on, uh, and I wanted Zahid to model it, and and he did. And that's actually still online somewhere. If you Google it, uh, like search Izaha or something, you can see it. But um, but yeah, so so Zahid is a is a, many things. He's in the fashion kind of industry. He does personal shopping. Uh, he helps people out with their fashion, and he's trying to basically um, promote um, modern fashion wear for men. 
but also promote the sunnah in a sense that you don't have to go away from the sunnah to look, to look good um and affordability too you don't have to spend millions of pounds to 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 be kind of stylish uh, i think it's really cool the the, the message is pushing um i mentioned in the podcast that i kind of started this episode or, or, or jumped on this episode with skepticism and i kind of wanted to grill him on on the on the fashion industry and he he really turned my turned my mind around even before we started recording and we were discussing it and you'll see that throughout the episode that he really has got his head screwed on and um while he is into fashion and stuff, he's he's also very, very, very much kind of grounded and, and, and bases it um, with the rules that kind of, or within the boundaries of Islam, which is really cool. Um, so do give it a listen. This is episode 81 of Freshly Grounded. Without any further ado, let's get into it. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I... Welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit. The brand new podcast. And after that bit? My best friends, face with Sam. Really? This is why we do episodes, we're live by the way. Oh, this is live? Yeah. Oh, so no, 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 not live on, yeah, but we're on, we're recording now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is why I um, only do podcasts normally <laughs> uh, in the in the mornings. Yeah, because bro, like when you do a podcast like this at f- three o'clock in the afternoon, yeah, it the uh, you have a whole you have a ho- hours off of stress from from before, yeah, and yeah. you have stress of everything you have to do after running around. It's too much, yeah. so I that's why I shoot podcast episodes literally at first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, nine a.m. First thing we do is we shoot an episode of podcast, and there's no stress because you just woke up, you're in a good mood, you had your coffee, yeah. like there's no you haven't started work like. Like emails and stuff, yeah. So, young with stress, but when I'm doing it at three o'clock and I've got <coughs> emails that I've got to send after this, I've got to edit and That's I've got to be it. done by five, and on yeah. top of that, we've got to get rid of that so far and, and all this kind of stuff. It's like mm. th- it's too much. It's a good start of the day, it's a good start yeah, to start productive day. So, good man. No, so, this is your f- this is the first, um, this is your first, is this your first time on the podcast? This is my first time on the podcast, really, really? man. Alhamdulillah, yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations, thank you, man. It's an honor, man. And this is the first time that we've ever that that we've ever used our brand new set yeah i know this is a lot of firsts today because the first time you're on the podcast yep it's the first time we're using this set fresh to go on our brand new set which is sick Alhamdulillah. thank oh, you so man. much and it's the first episode we're doing after we hit a million downloads is it yeah subhanallah alhamdulillah alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So philip it's, yeah it's a good day yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah and it's the first day i'm drinking half a mug of coffee yeah me too because coffee normally but i'm gonna have a sip with you in it so you're not generally a coffee man? No, I don't. I, I wanted to get into it because it's. I just like the lifestyle. Oh, you like but the I can lifestyle? But I can never get into it. Bro, but you know what it is, bro? The, I, I think that the coffee lifestyle has obviously like recently become like... As you know, it's always been... It's always been... It's always been how that. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it comes... It come, you, the love for it has to come after your love for coffee. That's what I mean. You can't love the My culture love is not and there not love the coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My love is not there. Water is what I'm trying to stick to at the moment. Like, because I'd normally drink like fizzy drinks and all that kind of mm. stuff. And now, alhamdulillah, like just very recently, like I've just started drinking water and only water because I got somebody telling me off to drink water. So I'm just, you know, getting to But water is all I drink, man. When you water go back to coffee. fizzy drinks, you feel like, I feel rubbish, feel yeah. bloated and all that kind of stuff. So alhamdulillah, it's like small steps in the right direction of being healthy, innit? I sometimes like every now and again on occasion we'll like try a fizzy drink or like have a fizzy drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I fancy, especially at weddings and stuff. <laughs> oh, and then, yeah. But then like as Coke, soon as I drink a fizzy drink, I'm like, Seven oh, up. now I remember why I hated him. That's it. Horrible, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a proper war guy. I, do you know what it is, bro? When you're thirsty, the the uh, all I all I can want is water. Like I'm thirsty, I just, I just want to down some yeah. water. And if someone, if I was thirsty, someone gave me like, I don't know, like a... Um, Orange juice from Sainsbury's, like one of those cartons. Con- concentrated from concentrated. I'm yeah. like, bro, I'm first. I don't want this. <laughs> yeah. I want to quench my first. Yeah, that does not quench first. So, yeah, man, I'm a water man. Yeah, alhamdulillah. But um, but bro, you should try. So the gateway coffee is mm. mocha. Mocha. I started off with that. You have to carry on with that. But there was two. You know, what it is. I realized when I found I'm trying to get you coffee like it's a good thing. You should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. But you know, what it is. Is I see the benefits of it. But I was. I, I started with mochas, but. I just didn't when I found out how much uh, you know sort of sugar and the other ingredients they add to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, you know, follow follow the brother Sunnah Remedies like what he does and stuff. 
Yeah, um, Abdul Hakim and stuff like he put a picture up on his um, page of like what coffee should be and what coffee is from the store. When I saw that, I was just like, I'm just gonna leave it. Yeah, I'm that's really what, you got be Yeah, you got to be careful because yeah. there, there's so many aspects. Here. So you can go to a coffee shop, and um, especially nowadays with like the like Christmas coffee stuff, stuff they got out, you can yeah. literally get a coffee that cost you five pounds bro five pound for a coffee so let's go back up audio on yeah. five pound for a coffee and on top of that it tastes nothing like a coffee <laughs> yeah, exactly but every time a milkshake this, but every time the season comes around yeah it tastes like a milkshake <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, like, every time the season comes around I really am intrigued to try the like, seasonal yeah. coffees so I always try them and I it went the other, nice. yeah, I went the other day to Starbucks and I had an eggnog coffee eggnog eggnog latte okay and but it tastes all right, but <laughs> when I want a coffee, I want a, a coffee like it needs to taste you, like coffee. To yeah, 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 yeah. So that coffee taste, and then yeah, man, that's what does it. So um, yeah, so I'm not I'm not a huge fan of them, although I do yeah. try them. But bro, I, I I realized I'll tell you one thing. Well, this is my secret to coffee now, mm. and I told this to um, do you know Yusuf who also studies at Baden? Yusuf, no, I, I, he's I, in my I, class. I probably seen him and said salam to him, okay. but I probably didn't know his Yunus. I probably never. So, he, so I told Yusuf this secret yeah. and he was like, I th I'd like to think he was quite amazed by it because it is really cool. Basically, the secret is this. You know when you get coffees, bro? Yeah. If he, and people who really like coffees, they end up spending 40, 50 quid a month on coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think that's how much Yusuf said he spends. And um, one day I was... I, on my way to work, I actually, I actually have a Costa drive through which is dangerous. Oh, yeah, so yeah, one yeah, day, yeah. I know so, the local one, yeah, yeah. yeah so, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. So yeah. regularly, I stop there and I get coffee in the mornings. Right. And one day, and I think this is literally the last time I did it, one day, a few months, about a month or two ago, mm. I went to the drive through ordered my coffee. Yeah. Um, I got a large coconut cappuccino, yeah? Okay, that's good. Coconut milk. Coconut milk is yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid, and I paid, yeah, near enough five pounds. And I looked at, and I think it's the first time, because normally you don't even hear the price and stuff, because you know it's a price of coffee, you know about how much the you coffee, know, yeah, you just yeah, tap yeah, it, you just you know tap I mean? and go, yeah. So, but this time I must have, my eye just hit the screen and I seen like near enough five R. Yeah. And I thought, hold on a second, bro, that's, that's a meal. That is. That's a full some meal places, yeah. on a coffee. Uh, I can't be doing that. I can't yeah. be spending five pounds on a coffee that's every true. time I get coffee. So I've, I, own, I will only go to like a big coffee place like that um, to grab coffee if for example yeah. I'm out and about and there's one there but not not on a regular basis yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but my secret what is that if you because there's something about having a coffee from outside with mm. like freshly ground beans and stuff yeah. and we're not going to use coffee beans and stuff here of course yeah it's a bit of a little bit of an experience especially if you're going inside the store right so the well, no, no, so my solution is yeah, to get your coffees from McDonald's you know why why? Because all McDonald's coffees cost one pound sixty. Okay, it's price point, yeah. And they taste just, bro. They taste they freshly ground coffee, and the coffee tastes fine there. Mm. Now, I like the coffees from McDonald's, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a flat white for like one pound sixty. Yeah, I've you seen get it. like a, a black coffee for like one pound twenty or something. Okay. So imagine you same can, coffee beans, cheaper price. Right. Yeah. But obviously, it tastes a bit different, but as it but it doesn't taste different as in worse. Yeah. Obviously, different coffee beans taste a bit different, but it's really, really not that deep because. You imagine, let's say you buy two coffees from um, Costa, yeah, and it costs you like ten pound. Like if you if you're buying proper like extra, like a premium drink, or like something. a premium yeah, coffee, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're spending ten pound for two coffees. Yeah, but how many coffees can you buy? What's ten divided by one pound sixty? Good maths. Does anyone know? No. no, no. Do you know? No, no, six. It about <laughs> six. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's about right. Let's check. I just ask Siri. We don't use our brains no more. I don't use Siri, actually, <laughs> that much. I do when I'm at work. What? 10 divided by £1.60. Yeah, you can get 6.25 coffees, bro, for the price, same price of two. Yeah. That's, that's good. good. That's good. And, and listen to this, yeah. <laughs> if you, um, for every six coffees that you get at McDonald's, you get a free one. So uh, you actually get seven coffees for the same price you get two. Tell me that's not good, bro. That's good. And if you just want to get it's coffee and only coffee and know none of the fancy stuff. Bro, that's it. Because I don't like the fancy stuff anyway. So and it's just and a there's McDonald's everywhere. There's and, McDonald's. There's McDonald's. and it's McDonald's And it's 24 hours. And it's 24 hours. Yeah. You might fancy a 1 a.m. coffee, bro. Is that a good thing? Mm. Maybe if you want to stay up, stay up for the fight. Well, I also sleep on coffee as well. Yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So Zahid. Yes. Um, welcome to Freshly Grounded. Thank you. 
Thank you for having me, man. Alhamdulillah. So I'm glad to be here, man. Well, it's lovely to have you on, man. And I, I it's, it's, um, in, I was intrigued to have you on because yeah. um, it's nice to have on brothers who do different things or in different fields. Course, and yeah. um, you're into something that I don't think. Uh, it's something that I'm intrigued by the world of fashion. I'm intrigued mm. by because I'm not really into it. Okay. I don't. I don't see the benefits of it. And for yeah. lack of a better term, I think I might be playing devil's advocate a few times on this conversation. <laughs> okay. But I think that everything that I say, you would have definitely heard before. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So 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 I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. So sure. first of all, um, we were speaking the other day, weren't we? And yeah, um, bit, yeah. I, I messaged you because. I was looking for some trainers. What happened is I needed some new trainers because my <laughs> I, I only get train. I I hate buying trainers. Yeah. Because I'm not like a trainer freak in it. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's haram because I know that you Evans collects trainers and, and, and stuff as well. Oh, for real? Yeah. Did you not know? He's I'm got not. a sick trainer collection. Has anybody seen it? Uh, he told me about it, but he has like. Lexus oh. Jordan, but and he, he his fashion game is strong. Yeah, you sure? But you don't, he, but you don't see it because like he's when he's talking to the yeah. and stuff like that. I yeah. remember speaking to him about. It, he was like, he's like, I'm into like, like I'm into like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. trainer stuff. They love that in the states, man. Who was Omar? Oh, Samir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Samir, yeah, yeah. I chat to him from time to time as well. I keep up to date with what he's doing as well a little bit. He's Samir or Yusha? Samir. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so so I only buy trainers when I feel like I need them, what and my need? and I know that I feel like everyone needs a black pair of trainers, all black, a white pair of trainers, all white, and maybe like some running shoes. Yeah, okay, and that's it. Okay, you don't need anything else. Three pairs. That's good. You should. That that's should me. be. That's good. Hamza. That's good. So that's I have really uh, my Nike Rochers, which are my running trainers. Yeah, Rochers. Yeah, yeah, Rochers. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do have some free ones, but they're quite old. Okay. So like my Rochers kind of replaced them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I basically have my Rochers. I had my black Air Maxes, all black. Yeah, which Air Max? I don't know. What, is there different types? Yeah. 90, I want to say. I don't know. Okay, Air Max 90s. Yeah, yeah. Maybe though. I might be wrong. Oh, but yeah. that just rings a bell. Huh? They were 90s, yeah? Yeah, 90s. Oh, they were like 90 or 95. Okay, 90, 90, 90, 90. According to Nate. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I had um, white Air Forces, all white. Air Force Ones, yeah? Air Force Ones. Okay, sick, sick. Okay, so that's my three trainers. Uh, no, they're good. They're good staples, standard. No, but you think they're good staples, standard, but yeah. you're going to be... The the, the 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 Air Forces were bought, bought for me by my wife. Okay, so I would never have bought them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and before the White Air Forces, I had all white Harachis when Harachis were big. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's because, again, my wife bought me them. Okay. Because my wife... It like In the loop. She like Yeah, she's a bit yeah. more in the loop. I, th I think she likes it when I'm like a bit fashionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sport, the sport, so she, sport look is in. So. But she knows that I'm probably not going to get it, so she just gets it for me. Yeah, yeah. Which I prefer, bro. Because if, yeah. like, if it's anyone that I'm trying to impress with my looks, it's going to be my wife. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, she likes the trainers. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So, um, so, here's what I, so here's what happened. So I had those trainers, and then my Air Max just got rinsed, bro. Like, I was busting them every day. Yeah. And so I needed a new pair of But that's trainers. good. You're getting, you're getting your money's worth yeah. because you've got a couple pairs. Oh. Where somebody's got like 20, 30 pairs, they're not they probably look as good as they did when they come out of the box. So you're not getting your money's worth. Exactly, man. You know? So so I I hit you up and I said, bro, look, I'm looking for some black trainers. And yeah. I actually hit you up. Bro, well, like, you sound desperate. <laughs> I swear. Did I? <laughs> you were very quick. Like, I don't want to spend all this kind of money. People keep telling me to spend this money. <laughs> Well, I see what happened. And then you should be Vapor Maxes. And I'm yeah. like, I don't want to buy these. It's so funny, man. I was, I was laughing. It you was Black me. Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, I was actually just uh, about to have dinner. You I'm applied like, so quickly. Yeah, no, I was like, yo, he sounds a bit stressed. And I'm like, I was, I was already online. Stuff was open on my laptop. Oh, okay. So that's why I was taking pictures so quickly as you were mm -hmm. applying. So what size are you? And then I put your size in. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope so what happened like, is I needed some black trainers. Yeah. And so I decided to buy some. And that would be the first pair of trainers I bought since I think before Freshly Grounded started. Can you believe that? Subhanallah. Yeah. Because the, the last that's time I bought trainers, really good. the last time I bought trainers was the, was the black Air Maxes. And me and Sam went shopping yeah. um, in Oxford. Oh, actually, I can't remember. We sent somewhere in London, we went shopping, and Central, he convinced yeah. me. He convinced me to buy the Air Maxes. Yeah, yeah. He's like, go on. I was like, oh. He's like, go on. I was like, oh. I was like, yeah. but they're ninety pounds. Who yeah. spends ninety pounds on shoes? Do you and find them comfortable though? Yeah, I love them because different models. Because nineties, I don't find them comfortable in my opinion. So they might not be nineties though. Okay, we do have to. Ninety fives. I got a pair of, but they were just like depends. the normal Air Maxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with the little thing around the front. The they what had a bubble. These? No, 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 no. Those no. ones. Are they Air Maxes what you're wearing? These are Air Max ones, but these are like my beaters. So I just wear these in the rain, snow. I don't really care about them. Even How much do they cost? So so I have a rule. I have a certain set of rules when I buy my stuff. If I can get it for... I, I know these rules are going to be absurd. They're not going to be... Okay, I'm so to you. I'm anti. I'm anti <laughs> this. I'm so to you. But for me, it's like, if I can get it for less than retail, I will. Mm. And I'll be very patient with it. That's fair. But then 
I knew I ever broke my rule once is when uh, I recently got married. I kind of treated myself to a pair of shoes and I paid resale. That's fair. And I paid like sixty pound on top, which uh, on an expensive shoe, or uh, anyways. But I'm getting my money. Tell me what shoes away. they were. It was a Yeezy Seven Hundreds. So Good Samir's ones. got a pair as well. They retail. Which which Yeezys? What do they look like? They're they're like they're they're part of this dad shoe trend and stuff, which I'm not really a fan of. But I really appreciate the de- design. It's got like... Dad shoe trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it's like thick soles. I don't know if you've seen shoes nowadays recently. It's like thick soles, thick midsoles, thick outsoles, and there's quite pointy shoes. No, if I, I show you some picture, you would you exactly know what I'm oh, talking okay. about. Or if you ask me, you'll, you'll know because he's into that. So I really appreciate the design. And if I look at something over and over again, I say to myself, you know, just enjoy it. If I sold a couple pairs and it justifies a little bit more, I try to like rotate my shoes as much as I can. But I, at the moment, I'm trying to get my, I wouldn't say my collection, but like all my pairs down to about 10. That's what I'm trying to do. How many do you have? So I counted recently. I had, I definitely had little, maybe like 30, 31 at one point. At one point. <laughs> Bro, that's a pair of shoes for every day of the month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is, it's shoes that, again, I got for lesser retail or for retail, or I got them for, like I won them in a raffle. So fair I had enough, the wear enough, them, which are worth more, but I keep them. And then I'm like, if I need... Uh, a couple of quid I'm just like Let me just flog these shoes And Yeah um, I mean It's a, it's a different world Like For example uh, Some of the off-white pairs I don't know if you know about Off-white as a brand yeah. The collaboration they did with Nike There's uh, The first ever 10 that came out Alhamdulillah I managed to win One of the pairs And they retail for Like I think Maybe £125 Off the top of my head But they resell now The US market And the UK market Is different But at that time I sold them for seven hundred and something pounds. How much did you sold? How much did you get them for? For one hundred twenty-five pounds or something like that. Wow! So the profit margin was like just mad. And what did I you do with that money? Uh, I invested in my details. Arabic classes, so it paid really? for my brother. Yeah, it paid for a whole wow. year, brother. So that's why I'm like, See, that's your, okay. So that's the aspect of it that I don't mind. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So let's that's make, I'm still a t- that's like a one yeah, in one fair, out. No, yeah. no, that's fair. That's fair. So um, my. Um, so, so, so to finish off that story So I was, yeah. I was like Oh I need to get a new black pair of shoes So I was online Okay Bear in mind That my wife Was trying to convince me To get the Vapor Maxes Right Very expensive Because she likes them yeah, But I think they're ugly The ugliest shoes that exist <laughs> So it on They're so ugly so it's, it's like mama innit It's like you either like it Or you don't like it It's one of those ones Yeah I really don't like them But, yeah, I, yeah. but, but I was like Alright look do, So then But then I always used to say like, Oh they're really ugly and stuff But yeah. Max, uh, the, uh, the Vapor Maxes But then when it came to the point Where I actually wanted to buy shoes mm. I started shopping for the Vapor Maxes Because yeah, yeah, yeah. what the wife wants She gets in it really yeah. So You're yeah, the starting point Yeah So yeah. I was like I was like it's calm I'll just get Vapor Maxes mm. So I go to get my Vapor Maxes now And I'm seeing 170 pounds And I'm yeah, like retail Bro, it's a new technology. That's well, it's not new technology, but to Nike, it's a new technology. So that's why it's always you're gonna pay a premium. You, if you do ever get on sale, there's like colors that you're not gonna wear, like violet and bright pink, and you know it's those colors that nobody wants. They go on sale, but I don't know. Allegedly, me me having this conversation with you sounds crazy because I know that if Sam was here and we having the conversation as in as in um, Sam from Inspire, yeah, like. He loves his like shoes and stuff. Yeah, all well. so, like, about he hundred seventy pound pair of shoes is like yeah, nothing. nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for me, I'm like because you know, bro. I only use shoes to wear them in it. Yeah, you're very and, much. But, you're very much function. But I do like it if shoes. The pair of shoes looks nice. Though. Yeah, like, yeah. I wouldn't be it's like a bonus. Right. I wouldn't mm. be. I wouldn't go in there. So oh, actually, do, I do also have a pair of black Vans actually. Okay, yeah, everybody has a Vans. They're very cheap. To, right? they're, yeah, yeah. Well, they're, I mean, they're, they're cheap, they're cheap. affordable. They're not very cheap. Yeah, they're no, I mean, uh, compared to like <laughs> shoes, I say that, yeah, but you know, is I come from like humble beginnings. Like I never had no money to earn. No, to I know, earn, but I know, I know you know you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, now course, it's kind of a little bit more. And also I do treat any pairs of trainers that I buy as investments. So like I'll buy shoes just for f- just for photo shoes and I'll give them back. Well, I think that's I think that's a good idea. And we'll definitely go into that. But but so so so. I, lo- I was looking for Vape Maxes and mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not buying Vape Maxes. I'm not spending £130 on shoes no. because the, the shoes that I want, I want to wear them every day yeah. because I just need shoes for every day. Mm. So um, I was like, what shoes do I buy? And then I thought, mm-hmm. oh, let me hit up Zahid because he's really into shoes yeah. and, um, pa- and fashion in general. Alhamdulillah. Um, Alhamdulillah. And I, I like your fashion sense hey. and stuff. So I was like, oh, let me yeah, hit him up. 
and um, and then you were like recommending me all these shoes and yeah. then you said look definitely go for Nike and then I think you went to eat and then in yeah. the time you went to eat I actually ended up buying a pair of Adidas I bought oh, that's why you disappeared yeah. <laughs> you blank couple. you were like you were like definitely get Nike for whatever you do sleep. and then you see me now I'm in my MDs yeah um, but bro, I literally have worn these every day since nah, I bought them they're good choice do they look mashed up already no 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 they're hamdulillah they're good the thing is though like with we live in the UK, so you're gonna expect the shoes to be. Oh no, I'm showing my. I was trying to show my shoes to the camera, but I think I like. No, but they're perfect. They're all round shoe because look, like, you're wearing grey. It goes with it. You can wear it all black. It goes with it. Yeah. It's a. It's a. It's a good for you. That's a good shoe to you run. You can run in these if you want to. You can, but there's no support on the upper, so you might roll your ankles. So don't do that. These are very much lifestyle. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And also Adidas. They look like running shoes, bro. Oh, you know, they're inspired by running shoes, but they're not like, because there's no upper to, to hold your foot in place. Oh, so you can definitely sad. throw your ankle and stuff like that. So that's why they're more lifestyle. And the color's really nice. Gum out so Like, this is what people look for. You know, the window gets dirty and stuff. So are you the type of person that doesn't pray in shoes because you don't want to crease the shoes? That's what Dao does. No, I, um, if I can take them off, I take them off. But if you have to pray in them, would you like? Yeah, like, I just pray in them, yeah. Would you, but would you be thinking Oh I'm creasing them right now Nah not really man Because the thing is I was like If I've paid I used to do that Where I used to tip to, And I used to walk carefully But then I realised That eventually You get to the point where You either step in that puddle yeah. Somebody steps on it And you can't go back The mark is there You can clean it all you want Yeah Now the The journey of the shoes Being mashed up Is it's there So you just wear them Like these These used to be cr crispy white And these actually got 3M So you're supposed to look after these They've so got like, what sorry 3M So you know all the cream part of the shoe 3M 3M yeah You know the reflective um, The reflective like How would you say You know like um, High vis jackets I thought 3M was um, Like Really Really strong glass Or something Yeah um, yeah, It's, it's a company That does oh, like adhesive stuff okay, okay, But yeah. I, uh, I think when in, in terms of like Clothes and trainers and stuff 3M we like Or I refer it to like The uh, The old like, What's it The fl reflectiveness or something okay, so, you so know, like, these have reflectiveness Yeah so these are yeah, so all the cream parts of the shoe they they light up when light hits it. That's really cool. So yeah, so so did three M do a con a collaboration with Nike? No no no, it's just Nike. Just it's just a model they put on the on the shoe. It's just it's just a design. So Nike design. just used three M. Yeah yeah yeah, they oh, use okay. it. Yeah yeah. So they use it on different shoes and stuff. Even some of those like it's just a design feature. So so the one thing that I I think I I. I think is really cool about yeah. collecting shoes because I know I've just kind of like gunned anyone who like collects shoes and stuff. Um, uh, but I think one thing that's really cool about it is the, the investment side of things mm. because I've seen that it's very lucrative. Um, give me a second. Oh, very. Man, I'm just coming back um, from a cold. Um, I've seen people make a lot of money off them and I think it's really cool because I am a big supporter of obviously like um, having like, people having savings and that kind of stuff mm. based off of my own mistakes in the past yeah. and so I think that's really cool if you can like if you have savings and it's like all in the bank account then it's very accessible so to have it in assets and stuff like a pair of trainers yeah. especially if they they only increase in value that sounds so like, like really stocks cool. a little bit Sorry, it's like buying stocks. Yeah, and stuff. man, you got a pair of trainers, man. And you, you know, like if you go through a hard time or, or there's an emergency, you know, you can sell a pair for six hundred pound, yeah. and you have thirty of those pairs. That's yeah. a, that, that is very clever and really cool. So, so especially if you look after them and they make them once and never again. Yeah, like I know people who do that. They they live off. They have their like part time job, which they're probably not making a lot of money on, but then they, you know, save their money correctly, buy shoes, or they'll just do whatever it takes to get that pair, knowing that everybody wants it. I mean, it's very saturated. Everybody's a reseller nowadays. Yeah. I don't know if you heard this term, like reseller. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like everybody's doing it. For me personally, you have to know the trends. You have to know what's good. Because there's times where, like for example, the GZ 700s I was talking about. Yeah. They were reselling for maybe about 350 initially when they came out. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, when he went into the... When Kanye, because this is his, his shoe that he designed, when he went into the White House, they depreciated. They went down in, price, down in value. Oh, really? Yeah, so obviously I got bumped, basically, because I paid X amount. Did you sell them? Yeah. No, no, I kept them because I knew it was a shoe I wanted to keep. Do you think they'll go up in value again? I think eventually, later down the line, when they stopped making pairs, but then you that's the thing you don't know. They might, like, re-release them again. Um, another colorway came out. They They were still sitting on the website, so... You no know, way. yeah. Whereas before, in seconds, Bef was yeah, gone. before, but they do it on purpose. Oh. So they like they build the hype. They'll let's say I don't know, a couple thousand pairs, but obviously people who got you know access to stores. There's there's a term called like backdoor backdooring or whatever, where you know pairs come out the stores and 
People pay me a premium for them Really? Yeah people it, You know people do a lot Just to get But then that's just the hustle I guess It's, it's part of it It's but a big culture isn't it The sneaker culture It's huge It's big Obviously Humongous. it starts from the States there, It's always a big big here But it's a bit more commercial now It is very commercial isn't it Wow So hold on a second So is, is, I find it so crazy That now We can sit here And talk about trainers The same way People talk about houses Like Yeah legit Like as in Obviously, it's a, l- a lot more money with houses, but yeah. the idea that you can be like, oh, you know, people are predicting when shoes are going to go yeah, down yeah. in value and up in value. Oh, Kanye's going to the White House. Yeah. They could go down in value. So, you know, like yeah. buy all the Yeezys when Kanye's in the White House because yeah. you can buy them cheap yeah, 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 and yeah, then yeah. sell them later. Like, it's, 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 it's different. I mean, and also the good thing about, I think the benefit with this as well is that people who are very young, like, I, you know, kids are basically making silly amounts of money. And I suppose they're learning about buying and selling as well. Yeah, so it's it's it, they're definitely learning about business. And what better time to make mistakes on a couple hundred pounds on some kicks than you know bigger investments yeah, and stuff true. like that? So that's, true. that's I think that's the benefit of it. Like you, there's like loads of conventions and stuff. Uh, I try not to go to them because, like I said, it breaks my, one of my rules, which is paying resale. I don't like doing that. So what's another one of your rules? So one so, so one of them is if I can get it for discount, I can. Okay. So I just try to get friendly with. A lot of people Also where you work Like favour for favours Is how you know I normally get Things for cheaper If I can get it for retail I can um, A lot of the raffles though Because people a lot Think like Oh Zahid How you win all these raffles I'm like It's all from Allah Like It's a raffle It's by chance That I, w- I win over and over again Do you Okay So that's another thing as well Like people assume that I'm Got all this money And I'm getting all these Off-white pairs oh, raffles just free completely They're completely free uh, So you can enter once With one email One address okay. and you, So what I do is I just go to blogs Which kind of get the list already And just sit there And I go through it Sometimes I get my family And I'm like To increase my chances But most time they're not Alhamdulillah I always uh, You tend to win a lot of raffles Yeah Alhamdulillah I've won quite a few But At the moment I've kept um, Quite quite relaxed with it Because um, You know I'm not trying to, I'm trying to save more money now And spend more money So so I'm stuck with is, what's your relationship like with money then being someone who is in an industry yeah. that is so thriving off of the idea of people spending money yeah. on brands and and and, and spending so much like like mm. I remember I, I, I had a meeting um, last week and I was wearing that coat right that I just bought last yeah, week yeah, yeah. Oh, my wife, it's nice and so I really like it's it really too nice. my wife chose it as yeah, you can yeah, imagine um and bro, I sat down and the guy goes to me, wow, oh, did you really pay £1,500 for that jacket? Because he thought it was kind of the goose. Right. Yeah. And I was like, what? Me? have £1,500 <laughs> in the jacket? Yep. I was like, of course I didn't pay £1,500 for that jacket. And then obviously I, he thought it was kind of the goose, which is not. I got yeah, it from yeah, foot yeah. asylum. Um, and I thought I paid a lot of money for <laughs> it, but <laughs> clearly not because it yeah. cost £1,500 for the goose. Yeah, it's um, expensive, man. Expensive. Uh, so my point is that people mm. obviously do want to buy. If we if we like you know call a spade a spade and yeah. not a big spoon, yeah. people generally that like make money in this industry based off of ego and based off of like what this what person look. wants to look like. Yeah. He wants to be seen in this brand. Now obviously you, there's extremes. So I'm not saying yeah. everyone is like that. Some people I'm sure like the clothes and they want to wear and they want yeah. to be in fashion. I'm sure like yourself like. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and I know that you're doing something really cool in trying to adapt menswear fashion into something yeah. that is also according to the sunnah. So we'll discuss that, yeah, yeah, inshallah. Yeah. But there is an element of people wanting to wear a fifteen hundred pound jacket so that it can be seen that they're wearing a fifteen hundred pound yeah, jacket. It's, it's, the, it's the it's the logo, it's the brand, it's right. What it represents, because if you think about Canada Goose, you're saying it's what fifteen hundred pound. Mm. You got to be earning a certain amount of money to be to own that jacket. Of course. And generally, people who are much wealthier. Can purchase these jackets So it's kind of like You created uh, There's already a bracket So it's kind of like Imagine you You're earning nothing But you saved all your money Now you got a kind of jacket Now it's like You purchasing that jacket Is like you being part of that group but And that's what I feel like When people buy into brands Yeah man uh, That's what they buy into That's why like For example Again coming back to Off-White and stuff His stuff is ridiculously expensive And has his own demographic That people buy it But when people judge to Nike And Nike has its connection To like the working class and stuff and it's like it's it's, it's always been uh, underground and then now it's more commercial and stuff There's, it connects with different people so when he does those collabs it's like people want to attach themselves to it because it's like attaching themselves to a, to a group and being part of something bigger in my opinion do you think that a lot of people 
do like save all of their money so that they can yeah. pay fifteen hundred pounds for a jacket, but then they have so that it can be seen that they were fifteen hundred jacket, but they but they but they're like struggling financially. I think they. I'm not gonna say there's nobody's doing that. There's definitely probably some people doing that, but everybody. Yeah, I think there's a small percentage that does. Small percentage. There's a very small percentage because, okay. but then it's like you need to be. I think then you're not thinking uh, correctly and like the way your purchases is made. It's kind, it's kind of like if you're earning ne- if you're earning next to nothing, you're just earning enough to survive. But you really want to buy something, like that person will probably do whatever it takes to buy that to buy the X Y Z. But that, it doesn't that, that isn't that what takes discipline? Because yeah, it takes you, discipline. But it's it's the, it's the intention that's is is what I think is wrong. Like for me personally, I, I guess we will slowly get into this. But like a lot of the stuff I wear in my pictures, I own, I still own, and I got them for dirt cheap. Like I didn't. I was gonna say because yeah. you, you seem like you're quite money wise. You don't seem like the type of person who'd yeah, waste money. Nah, nah. It's been, but you're in the industry where you yeah. could easily fall into that. That's you know is 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 my tw- my parents have taught me this from young. And you know, like, what's the legal age to work? Like sixteen, right? So, that, so my old man definitely pushed me to work as soon as. So, like, while everybody was having their fun and stuff, I was earning money. And obviously, what you come to learn is when you grow up, you end up spending more things, getting more things. So, I understand the the value of money and stuff. But one thing I do take into account is that I'm never gonna take this money with me when I die. Okay. And that's one thing that, because I know some people that they won't spend any money because they're scared that when they need something, they're not gonna have it. And it's kind of like that idea of not having no money. So okay, okay. I know some people who don't spend anything. With me, you know, alhamdulillah, like, you know, I come from humble beginnings. Used to live like in a flat. Now, alhamdulillah, you know, we, we're living in a house now. Our family's all here. We're all contributing and stuff. And it's like, we don't have to, you know, be so, 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 um, so like focused on, oh, I can't spend this tenner mm. or because I'm going to lose one pound and, and then amplify that. It's, I, I don't think it should be like that. And also, but again, back to the shoes, like 10 pairs is a lot. But coming from 30, I'm making an improvement. Well, I, I can't wait to the day where I only have one pair. Well, you know, what's, I, mean, I don't think that you should go for just having one pair, one pair because yeah. the fact that you have 30 pairs and it's, um, did, did, it's, it's, yeah. it's like stock for you, it's like savings. It's, yeah. it's not, all the, not all the pairs though, because I made a lot of silly mistakes, like re, let's say reading trends. And I like, for example, I got a pair of acronym Nike Prestos. Um, the original pairs that came out worth a lot of money. Second pairs that came out not worth that much. The, even the pair and the size I got was still sitting on some websites. So like that was a um, sort of purchase I made, and th- and those retailed for one seventy, and they're just sitting on top of my cupboard. So like that's money I could, I could have used for something else. So but you could but but that's with anything, bro. If you're, you're in that line exactly. of work, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna make expenditures where you're, yeah. you're predicting the market to, to rise. So, it's very much yeah. pocket money though. That, that's not what I do. It's just I dibble and dabble when I right. when I can. There is some pairs I do have on on ice. Yeah, <clears throat> where if I do need it. Then I'll spend it, but then it's like. What does on ice mean? When I mean it's on ice, which means I pack it, put it away, and I don't see it okay. for a certain amount of time. Okay. When I mean I put it on ice, so then like for example, those presses I sold to pay for my first year of Badr, the second pair, if I add a little bit on top, inshallah, that should pay for my second year. That's really cool. That's uh, yeah, that I can't to say me that, that makes because really I would love really cool. to wear them. Well, like yeah. you don't know how badly I want to wear them. They're sick. I can yeah. break necks. People see me. There was one time I was in, um, I was in Central. In like near London Bridge, um, there was like some halal food festival thing. I was there for a little bit, and um, there was this kid, some Italian kid, with his mum, and they were pointing at me and the shoes I really? wore, and they were like, "Oh, it looks." And I said, "Oh, hi, thanks for that kind of stuff." And I was just like, "It's a bit of a good feeling, but it's because it's like that kid will never see these kind of pairs, and I'm just me, like just want a raffle and all that kind of stuff." Right. So, um, but yeah, I try not to um, attach myself to the materialistic too much because I did, I did you do that in the past. One it's a journey, the road. Like we're young, man. Like you learn, yeah, you learn. You learn. You're growing as a, uh, as a person as well, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You seem to have your head screwed on, and look, like, there's yeah. nothing haram in having sh- shoes. Of course, like of, of course, course, yeah, yeah. You, uh, you, if if anything, like you're because of the line of work that you're in, you're more it, kind of going to be into that kind of stuff, and yeah. and um, also I think what's inspiring is that I've heard you uh, mention in the past mm. that you also have another motive. Um, to to your work which is in fashion and to yeah. um you know uh, uh, doing personal shopping with uh, with clients oh, and stuff yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 that motive is is that y- you kind of want in this world of fashion mm. uh, and with modest fashion becoming really big yeah. you kind of want people to be inspired by 
you to see that they can be fashionable but still be modest in their clothing yeah I'm and sure modest fashion that. is very big for females but not as big for men yeah yeah, yeah. so they so what i do know is that the i mean the thing is modesty has been chucked around and i think has 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 warped the the word modest is not what modest should be in my opinion like i feel like when when we when we talk about modest as muslims it comes from islam and it comes from the sunnah and i feel like now and just my small comment on the on the on the women's industry, like I don't think it's there, but but then but they're so big, like they're making their money, they're having their conventions, they do that all that kind of stuff, and only now, like with with the guys and with men, it's something that's like I, like I've said before, like there's always brothers that dress, you know, mashallah, all, like modest and covering the covering what needs to be covered, aura is covered and all that kind of stuff, but there's no like sort of style element. Like I know there's brothers that are out there that do want to look good. But they just want to make sure that their Islam is not compromised. Right. And obviously, I can't. I, 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 one thing that I'm trying to make sure is that I never step into the women's side because there's no, no need for me to be there. I have ideas of ways to benefit it, but I, in my head, I was like, I'm never going to go there. It's not worth it. Yet. It's not worth it. I mean, you know, Alhamdulillah, I could possibly do it through my, my missus and, you know, help her with her things. And inshallah, she creates her own stuff with my input. You know, um, to solve problems that she may have day to day, but I'm just like, there's no point. It's just not a good. It's not a good thing to go to. Let me just look after the guys, and if I can look after the men and set an example, and then maybe you know other people kind of take note and take modesty a bit more seriously, in my opinion. It, well, it is yeah. really cool because, like, like you said, um, a lot of the times, especially when you're not practicing. I remember, and I've said it so many times that yeah. when I wasn't practicing, I would look at practicing people as mm. like old. Uncool, like old men. How long ago was this? Four years ago. Okay. So to my journey is a bit similar, but I had a different a different different approach. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Islam. But 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 when I see you, Mm. you are like you know you you got your head head covered like yeah yeah alhamdulillah like. Like the sunnah, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it actually looks really fashionable. Like, yeah, yeah, that's I'm thinking to myself, could I get away with working that yeah, hat? Yeah. It's quite good. And stuff you like could, that, you've got about the ankle yeah. and stuff. So, you know, I think you are you are hitting hitting that kind of market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, definitely my demo- the demographic. Have like, you seen a good response from the Muslims? Yeah, alhamdulillah. I, you know, it is. I never, I've only ever got one negative thing, and it's not even to do with the fashion or that side of thing. Was it, it was my name, my, it was the name I had on my social media. So right now, it's Zahid MA. So Zahid and then my middle name and last name. Yeah. Emmy. Um, but it used to be it used to be called Zahid the Great. This was before when I was in like Jahiliya and I wasn't practicing oh, and stuff. Okay. And then because I was into fashion, especially streetwear, and obviously streetwear has uh, elements that fit within the modest style. So when I started practicing maybe four, four and a half years ago, uh one thing I knew when I when coming into Islam like learning was that it's a lifestyle and you have to change everything. You can't pick and choose. And obviously, and I was like, can I, do I have to compromise my style? And I was right. like, no, 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 I, ca- I can definitely implement it. And I, and I always thought, and like I said, like how you said people you thought was old and like dressed in modest clothes. For me, I thought it looked so good. I thought it looked really good. I've seen brothers, the younger brothers that do it. So like they wear their thobe, but then they like, like, have like a nice puffer jacket, some bright Air, Air Max 95 or something. And they, but they, on their way to Juma, like, and they look good. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to be like that. Yeah. So they, so so brothers I see from day to day, they very much inspired me to do it. Bearing in mind, I don't wear thobes as much as I want to, because I feel like the there's a couple of things that, you know, can't say too much, but like I want to make my own one day, inshallah. Okay. A bit more functional, a bit more easy to use, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, like it's not it's not hard, man. It's like, I think the sunnah looks good. And who was telling me? Was it you or someone? Oh, there's a brother I'm, I'm talking to, and he was mentioning. He goes, "You make the sunnah look good." Yeah. But in my head, I felt bad and good at the same time because I, I felt bad because I truly believe the sunnah is like we follow the sunnah in everything we do, so we should do it with the and, and it's the best thing to do. So why don't we do that with the way we dress? Like, yeah. and I take smaller things into consideration, like rip rip jeans and stuff like that. Like I don't. Like the way that looks, and I think there is some uh, hadith that like talk about like wearing raggedy clothing. Yeah, yeah, the wearing nature. clothes. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. So I, so I try to avoid that altogether. Oh, really? Yeah. I remember when I first yeah. um, started. Oh, I think I can hear Steve outside. He's gonna come in here, you know. We um, 
because we're shooting this at um at the studio we sometimes have couriers coming in and out and i think that i just had one um i remember when i i used to have a, a pair of ripped jeans yeah and it was fairly early it was fairly early on when i started practicing and I didn't know too much about like the whole ripped thing, mm. but I knew that I couldn't have my aura showing. Yep. And so what I did is I bought these pair of ripped jeans because I loved them. Yeah. And um, I took them to my nan and I cover asked her to cover the <laughs> ripped, like, because I still wanted it to be ripped, but I just wanted the hole to, um, to, not, show to not show my skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what she did is um, she used a, a pillowcase, a white pillowcase to yeah. cut it up and she like, put that in all the things. And so yeah. like I could pray and stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of a way of like making fashionable stuff modest, but it's still got, it's yeah. still like ripped up, which you ripped shouldn't up. wear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know. I just, I think clean, crisp, minimal always looks attractive. I, I, I mean, when it comes to interior design, when it comes to products, it looks good. And I think also minimal kind of does go with the sunnah as well as sort of even the money side of things. So like, Again, a lot of the stuff I wear is recycled. Like for this hat, I've worn it in numerous photo shoots. And loads of people ask me. So I'm getting my money's worth out of it. And I got it on how, discount. How much was that hat? So it was in a store I used to work out um, in the past. It's called a Docker hat. I think it retailed for like £22. Oh, it's £22. Yeah, £22, yeah. So and how much did you get it for? I think I got it for like... I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really actually like... I don't know why I asked you that question because... Yeah. Twenty two pounds is I, I don't I don't want to sound like, like I'm judging all your expenditures now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But pounds, I'd spend twenty pounds in a hat. I'm yeah, sure yeah, I twenty pounds a hat. But uh, again, like I if think I my hat you used to sell for twenty five. So yeah, <laughs> which is all, all, which is good for a hat, and you're wearing it all the time, anyways. But again, like, if I can get it for cheaper, I will get it for cheaper, yeah. save the money. So I got I think twenty two pounds. I got it for eleven pounds. And no, the reason I was actually asking is because I actually liked it. So I was thinking, oh, I might buy one. Yeah, because yeah, so well, I, yeah. I might try your one. On. Yeah, yeah, inshallah. This, I mean, this hat fits like perfectly. You can't really buy anymore. It's like you just one of those things that like mass produced and sold in a store. A lot of other places sell them, but for me, it's the fit. Inshallah, I might make one one day, but there's so many companies doing it. But I, I, th- I feel the, like you would be like the perfect, um, like the Muslim version of a. Uh, mm. Who's it? I'm trying to find this guy on my phone. Yeah. I think Samir sent me a video once. Inshallah. But the thing is, when I, you know what it is? Because my, I also, I wear, the reason why I wear a lot of hats, because I shave my head. My head's, I shave it every, like, when it yeah, grows too I long. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, so I wear hats. Uh, Bobby Hundreds. Bobby Hundred, the. He started. Oh, you're talking about the, with the little um, dynamite thing with the logo. I don't know. I know Samir, Bobby Hundreds, the hundreds. The Samir hundreds. sent me a blueprint. No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Complex. The blueprint. Yeah, 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 yeah. Complex magazine did something on him. Yeah, they do. They do like um, like short films on like big people in the industry. They did Have you watched this video? How Bobby Hundreds turned a T-shirt. Into yeah, yeah, a yeah. Wear. I watched all of them. Yeah, yeah. So They're really good. Yeah, but them. you could be like, Inshallah. Like, yeah, that's the plan. Not that's one of the steps I want to go to. Is that I want to be able to run it. I feel like you're taking a step in the right direction with it. I mean, Inshallah, I'm definitely getting a lot of traffic coming my way and that's not me saying it because I can't keep track of social media like yeah. I just about look after my Instagram but I get people telling me when they search this they see me when they search this they see me so yeah now you've been featured in like magazines and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah, a lot, yeah. and, yeah. and um, I think the, the the good thing is that look, look there's no denying the fact that the, the fashion is like a very um, you have to be very careful with being mm. in fashion especially as a Muslim and practicing Muslim because you can fall off into something. It's, it can be true that something is halal for you, yeah. um, and the asal of it is halal. But you can easily fall into like risky stuff. Yeah, yeah and um, it's 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 fun and nice to know that someone like you, yeah. who is in that, has his head so screwed on about yeah, it and stuff. And, and you know, you can see that your priority is always the dean and stuff yeah, like that. So it's really cool, man. Because uh, like, I think in a lot of places, everybody has their part to play. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I might not know. Um, much about fashion or something like that of course, yeah. but um if i know that i can message you and say look um and find something from head to toe for something that you need right, like, yeah, uh, which is what my uh, online personal shopping thing like kind of touches upon um, yeah. I, le- I, I do leave it very much in the background just because i have like a day job but it's um uh, it's funny that you mentioned about like uh, businesses that provide a service and stuff how they are you know you can earn a lot more than rather than do like a business i remember you mentioned this uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's one of the things that is it is good and i and i'm thinking should i push that but then again it's like i know that a lot of because the thing is i saw all the stuff i wear i i I literally sit online and like online window shop 
for things that like people uh, may want to wear, but also that I would want to wear. Do you get people messaging you asking for advice? Like all I the, that's the reason why I started the online personal shop because cool. everybody asked me from all around the world, which is a good feeling. Like brothers from Indonesia, the brothers from Algeria, like everywhere. Like they ask what's me. online personal shopping? So you help them buy things from online? Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, I, I'm providing something a bit more limited in the sense that I. Okay, essentially what I'm doing uh, is have like a, a built questionnaire that I've done on Google. People will fill it all in. There's like a couple packages. There's like a, at the moment it's like a bronze package and a silver package. You choose how many items, how much, what color, and then some other questions that if you like minimal branding, uh, loads of branding, whatever. Uh, how many items of what? Clothing? Clothing, yeah, yeah. So if you want to like, let's say you're looking for three pieces of clothing, okay. looking for a hat, jumper, and a pair of trainers. Yeah. You would then say, I, w- I want it roughly in this color. Uh, this is how much I want to spend. <clears throat> and what's another thing? Like, sort of, you know, any uh, any other extra details. And then I basically go and find it for you. Okay, sick. And yeah. then you charge, you have different packages that you charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go, you can click on the link on my Instagram and, and it's like, um, and you go through the package and halfway through, you'll see like the prices and stuff. I still kept it really small because it is still very new. Yeah. And also very much learning. But um, it's well. It's cool that you're trying to play around with different. Yeah, it's things a solution to, try to and figure out. Yeah, figure out how how you can best monetize what you're doing because yeah, there yeah. obviously is um, a way you can monetize it. Yeah, oh, your your, your, your passion. Yeah, and you just have to figure out what the best way of doing it is, and and that's, that's how you do it. Yeah. You play around with different ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very so much a solution cool. though to like my DM just because it got a bit tiring because then it's like I was sitting on my phone too much mm-hmm. as well. And so, like, anytime I do it, I'll be, like, answering brothers. And in my head, I'm like, you know what it was? It was like, I was answering your question. I'm like, I'm providing a service at this point. Why don't yeah. I just do it? That's when, And then I, a couple of weeks, and then just kind of launched it. Kind It'd be interesting launch. to sit down and have a think about how you could really um, scale it and monetize it on a, on a full-time level and scale it. Because yeah. obviously, I've even, even online personal shopping yeah. is great, but it's not scalable because you're one man. That's what I mean. Um, I've, no, I've definitely thought about that. The yeah. thing is, though, that's again, that, yeah, go ahead. a lot of people are not doing what I'm doing. I, yeah. I, I see myself probably one of very few people that are doing it, so I can't even bring people on. Otherwise, I'll have to educate them. But there's like, do they have the passion that I have? Do they have the knowledge that I have? Because you have to have knowledge of the industry mm. as well as knowledge of... Islam and you have to have a good knowledge of Islam like to the point where detailed things were like for example like the hadith about the gripped clothing yeah, yeah or, or, or even I don't know I would say in some cases but like let's say fast forward and I've created a product product or something like right. a version of a hat or something I would want the model to be a practicing Muslim but you're but you, you gotta be careful there because you're not what, with your stuff you're not saying that my clothing is Islamic, and you're not saying that, no, like, no, 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 because, no. because, because, because there's a difficulty with assigning something with the religion, yeah, 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 or yeah, just yeah. saying that it's compatible for a Muslim. It's more compatible. And it sounds more like what you're saying is, I just want to be able to create solutions for the Muslim world yeah, yeah, yeah. That's within my... a growing, growing market. Because there's Absolutely, no, de- yeah. there's no denying that there's more and more Muslims in the world every day. Yeah, and so we can't, and so. And somebody has to be able to relate to the Muslims of here. Mm, yeah. And one of the things that is hugely prominent in schools and institutions is fashion. Yeah. And so to have someone who is at the forefront of it saying, look, all right, cool. If this is one of the mm. things that we're going to have to deal with, let me be the guy who's going to try and help yeah. create something compatible for the Muslims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's admirable. I mean, I, I, I know a lot of people, you know how I mentioned like scalable, so like scaling up and stuff. Yeah. I'm very much, I kind of take my slice of the pie and just say alhamdulillah and that's it i don't want to be earning yeah, but, but, but it's not about that. it's about it's about trying to find mm. a solution it's about trying to benefit yeah yeah, yeah. Of, like look because it, it reminds me a lot of omar so omar yeah. he's he, he he loves trying to figure out solutions to, yeah, yeah, yeah to things like this and to, course, to how yeah, he can kind of scale something in yeah. and and it's a testimony to how he works now because mm. he's a, a freelance UI UX designer. Yeah. Um, uh, well, no, sorry, he was a freelance UI UX designer. Yeah. And um, he was like the UK's, in like a couple of years ago when he was doing it prominently, he was like the UK's uh, most viewed uh, designer on Behance. So he had no problem getting in jobs at Lohan and, yeah. uh, and all that kind of stuff. And, and it makes a lot more sense. That it's much more lucrative to be a freelance designer if you're on that level. Yeah. And you could charge as much as you want for a Very contract. True. Yeah. And then you're you're living like your own life, everything's good. Mm-hmm. But he threw all of that away and 
to, to, to build a team and to build something that's scalable so, for his long-term vision. Yeah. And his long-term vision is very inspiring. If you heard Omar's long-term vision, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He wants to genuinely benefit like creatives and people all around the world. Yeah. Who, and and, and so him doing feed source here with a free man team is how he started it. And and some I get I understand it. I people get. would look at him and be like, You're crazy. You're mad. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. are you here struggling and striving and trying to get contracts instead of the other for 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 um for feed source, yeah. for all these overheads of obviously it's like the other when it's the bigger you picture. can earn ten times that money by doing yeah. a freelance. But for him, it's like I don't want to create something for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I want yeah. to create something that I can bigger, like, big, bro. So, yeah, well, I, so when I die, there's institutions that I began, began well, like, for yeah. creatives, and so, yeah. so scalability is. It's key, yeah. It's key, man. For yeah. because your intention is beautiful, yeah. And you're uh, you're right in saying that the 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 there's just going to be more and more Muslims. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah, by the mercy of Allah, Muslims are not just Pakistani or just, not just yeah. a, like Asian and this and the other. International. And more and more Muslims yeah. are, are being born as like, like you know, British born Muslims and, uh, uh, and Irish and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. From for, for all parts of the world. Yeah. There's always been Muslims all over yeah. the world. There's, there's, there's millions and millions of Muslims in Africa. There's millions of Muslims yeah. um, everywhere. Russia, Germany. But... Mm. There's also going to be more and more Muslims here that's like born yeah. and, and brought up here and from this culture. And so you're creating something where you're just tackling a. a it's a, a new a lane that doesn't exist. Yeah, and I feel like, kind of like what we saw Omar's trying to do, like, I do want this to be bigger than me. Guys, I'm just taking a quick break from this episode um, to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Wahid. Um, Wahid Invest um, help you invest your money into halal portfolios um, in the UK, in the US, uh, in, in, in many different countries. Um, it's halal investing. You can put in as little as £100 uh, on their website. It's basically a service uh, where you can kind of upload your money um, and your savings uh, and they'll invest it into, into halal companies. They'll avoid companies to do with alcohol, to do with ribar, uh, tobacco. You can find out more by going to freshlyguided.com forward slash Wahid. Guys, don't sacrifice your beliefs to start investing in Wahid. Wahid has helped clients all over the States put their money to work in halal portfolios and now they're in the UK. Your savings do not need to sit in a bank account doing nothing. You can sign up in minutes Get your account, account approved instantly and start with as little as £100. It's halal investing the way it should be. Go ahead and check out freshlygrounded.com forward slash wahed. That's freshlygrounded.com forward slash W-A-H-E-D. Let's get back into the episode. Because mm. I've even had, because even day-to-day -day struggles, I'm like, if I can, if I keep at this, I can then, for example, like when you uh, get a job and stuff, like I've, I've, I'm, I'm at jobs where it's hard to pray. When it's time to pray, I'm I'm stuck like helping customers, all that kind of stuff, like on my day to day job. But if I can make this big enough, where I can employ young Muslims, where when the van goes off, we shut the shop. Like I want this to be bigger than me. Like I, I want yeah. additional benefits than just menswear. It's it's not it's not really menswear fashion. It's just I found a lane that doesn't exist. If I can lead it, it's a culture basically. That's what I mean, and yeah. I, it can be really big because there is some Muslim um, sort of designers and stuff who are doing collaborations with Nike. They are like, especially in parts of Dubai, where they're very limited to what they can get. Like, I, I truly believe like the, what I want to do in the Muslim world is where I need to stay. Like, I know again, like tapping back to uh, what the, like the women's uh, models we're doing, I've no noticed like, for what my missus tells me and stuff is like, they're trying to please the Western world when modesty comes from the Muslim world. And I'm just like, but th that doesn't make any sense. Like, it comes from Islam, but then you're, you're you're dressing modestly, but then it's like coming. The output is not how it really should be. Then, then but then I don't want to do that with men because it's like we're at a stage where, if I can make the foundation strong enough, anything that builds on top of it is good. Because I know there's brothers who want to collaborate with me and do a lot of stuff for me. Alhamdulillah. But then when I look at their page, um, or th there's certain things that I'm like, but that's not the Sunnah though. That's not Islam. Like. I can't, I can't I need you to be 100% Or mm. I need you to be um, I, Acknowledging what you're doing And working towards s Something bigger Like You know what I mean That I just feel like that's That's how it should be It's tough be. man it's, it's tough, tough But you know what it is I've not got nothing but good feedback Yeah Nothing I haven't got anything negative And I'm You know Alhamdulillah I'm, I'm happy that mm. What I'm doing That means I'm doing something good Right yeah You're definitely not going into something that's easy I'll tell you that much Yeah But I'm very passionate tough. about it And I know yeah. it's not going to be easy But again like 
But for yeah. stuff like that, it's, it's so important to like, like you said, mm. to have knowledge to constantly go back to teachers and and, and make sure that what you're doing is correct. Yeah, and that's stuff a big and thing as well. Yeah, yeah. man, you're very very important. Yeah. Um, so kind of leaning off of the. Also, oh, you know, one thing I wanted to mention, bro, yeah, was <laughs> that my one of my intentions yeah. in in this interview or this or this this episode of the podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. was that I was gonna I wanted to really ask you and find out don't like grill me. <laughs> no not grill you bro but I really wanted okay. to find out what I mentioned earlier of like the idea in the, I it seems like in the fashion industry a lot mm. of it is built of ego like yeah, for yeah, example yeah. Um, mainstream oh yeah 100% like for example oh, yeah, have trying to get the most expensive pair of shoes or the most expensive jacket even though yeah. one can't afford it just to be able yeah. to show that you have that brand on it, you right it's, it's part of the culture and so what I, I, I was yeah. going to ask you about that I was going to ask you if it affects your ego and, mm. and and whether whether and how you ground yourself yeah. and I, I feel so grateful that I don't even have to ask that question because I yeah, think that I'm is gonna. something that one could assume and even perhaps watching this episode people might assume hold on a second his ego must be out of like mm. his mind because he's he's in an industry where he's kind of where built on that built on that yeah 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 I know what you mean but before we were we started talking on a, on, on air yeah. we were talking about you working in retail and yeah. that kind of stuff and I was saying that it takes a, a person to remove his ego to be able to say to himself look this is my passion this is what I want to do but right yeah. now I have to have a day job I have to get a day job yeah. and I think that's really inspiring to show that to show that you're not you're not sitting here saying oh you're like you're not hiding the fact that you have a day job in retail yeah, 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 and yeah. then saying oh look look and on your Instagram you're just full of Gucci and Louis but really yeah. like you're, you're also working I could, I could never do that I, I, I would that's you know what it is I would love to but then it's like I, I feel like also like spending a lot of money on something or things uh, th spending uh, money on extravagant things as well like I, I, again there's also there's a hadith that mentioned about this I feel like that's not part of the sunnah I feel like if you're spending less um, I think the value of the item or what it, the intention of what it does is is more than you know the, the cost of the item and also like a lot of people you know may have money but there's a lot of people that don't have money like it's about think about everybody or think about like you know the everybody who, who my demographic basically and it's like i'd rather bring more people in than push more people away so like you know like the stuff i wear if i can find it for cheaper i'll, I'll go find it for cheaper it's not about the logo it's not about the brand even though you know maybe inshallah i would like to collaborate with these people yeah of course but it would have to be on my terms it wouldn't right. have to be on their terms yeah. so and that's yeah, what you man. could do when you build such a big perception. Yeah. Let, let's go off the topic of fashion for a bit. Um, okay, I sure. know that you know the first time me and you met, you were I don't you weren't married definitely mm. at that time because we met a few years back now, didn't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you um, remember? Through, yeah, through social media. Yeah, alhamdulillah. But uh, recently you got married. How how long have you been married now? Uh, been married? A I think it's a couple of months, man. Alhamdulillah. And yeah, how are you finding it? Yeah, it's good, man. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah it's very much. Um, you know, very much had uh, trust in Allah. Didn't push anything. Didn't force anything. It naturally happened. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, uh, what's it like, for example, you know, having <laughs> because you said you'd been um, like, you know, trying to practice mm. um, for the, for the best part of like five years now almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so for that period of time at least, like not having um, a female in your life. Yeah. I know that it's amazing how Allah, how how, how like promoted and how amazing being married is in islam in the yeah. sunnah uh, and by allah and it, it's amazing because you when you are married you you see that as a man you need that female companionship in your yeah, life yeah 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 and and, and and probably likewise for a female um need man how have you found that change now that yeah. dynamic coming home to your wife and that yeah. kind of stuff? you know what it is it hasn't been too dramatic but there just be more benefits than anything then drawbacks it's like it's, it's, it solves a lot of, uh, it solves a lot of problems like you have somebody to go to if you want to talk to about something yeah. you know if you're that there's some things you can talk to your to your wife about that you can't talk to the rest of your family about you know there's there, there, there's that, that exclusive relationship where it's just you two and you, you just you just kind of be a bit more free can be a bit more relaxed and um, and it creates that balance because there's there's things that you have to do and there's things that she has to do and it, it just creates that balance man it's, it's nice it's nice to like finish work and come home and see your missus how was your day all that kind of stuff it's nice it's it's a good feeling man and I don't know why you know I know some people shy away from it or they like dunya hold them back and stuff uh, I was in a position as well I don't know yeah I was actually unemployed for like a good couple of months during the process I was um, you know you know trying to get trying to get married and stuff 
So was I at the beginning. I yeah, think. yeah, and a, but a lot of people would not do that. Yeah, a lot of people would be, who take the day job or find something else and, and do it. But I was just like, let me put my a complete trust in Allah and let me see how far this goes. I didn't put, I didn't push nothing. I didn't pull nothing. And when you do that, then you see the fruits after, man. Well, like you do like you just see how beautiful it is, and then when you get to learn the person, you're like, raw. You're like, we're the same, but you like this and I like this. It's 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 beautiful, man. I don't know why people push it so much, but then that comes with like you know education and understanding. And do you that, um, man. do you feel like it's like having like your best friend to like, but with you all the time you come home to your best yeah, friend? Yeah, yeah. You're always joking about you can be really yourself. That's yeah. another thing, so because you're different, you're different with your boys, you're different with your colleagues. But with your miss, you kind of can just do whatever you want to do, really. Yeah. But then obviously then you learn things that may annoy them, may not yeah. annoy them. What makes them laugh, what kind of stuff, what pushes their buttons, whatever. What trainers they like. What trainers they like. Yeah. What, like for me, like like how you said your missus is like in, like in the loop with fashion stuff. See, my missus is not really into that kind of stuff. So yeah. I'm kind of bringing her into that world. Okay. But like, I'll buy kicks. She's like, why'd you buy those for? I'm like, I really wanted them, but I couldn't find my size. So I just got them for you. So I can appreciate them that way. Do you know what I mean? Um, so so these, these kind of things come. Like, if you're with me, you have to. You know what I mean. At least the kicks. You know, you covered everything. That's good. Alhamdulillah. But so if we were here today, local, if we were here today doing this episode, and I was yeah. in my black vans, would yeah. you would you refuse to do the episode with me? No, no, I wouldn't. Because you because you know it is. You're working. You're comfortable. That's no, no, I wouldn't. That's that's one thing I don't do. I don't judge on what you wear and stuff. I'm not that guy, man. Should I tell no. you one thing that I do spend? Um, as I, I I do buy a lot. Yeah. That is like um like boxes and socks and vests. Yeah, because I feel like you have, you have to be comfortable. No, as in like you just have to be comfortable in them. Like yeah. I would, I buy, I, always, I buy so many socks. I'm yeah, always yeah, buying yeah. socks. Yeah, they're good investment. Like man, depends which ones you get though. Do you get ones with like patterns? And stuff? These are my new, well, these are my latest purchases. It's so what? comfortable. What are they? See, what are they? I think they're like Converse or something. But okay, so. really comfortable. I didn't really look at the brand. I just wanted to get just so, like trainer socks. CK Maxx will yeah. have like a really good um, <laughs> <laughs> socks. And yeah, the, uh, the affordable prices, department. yeah, big brands, yeah, yeah, yeah la. They do some good stuff. Bob, you know Calvin Klein's, yeah? yeah, they cost thirty-five pound for a pack of three or thirty-eight pound. Yeah. And in TK Maxx, they do the exact same ones for twenty-five pound. Yeah, yeah. They do see they do Calvin Klein's for twenty-five. Yeah, that's good. There's some people that don't. Sick. Yeah. I was literally going to buy some online, and I was in Calvin, <laughs> I was in TK Maxx. I was like, oh my gosh! Yeah. And it literally says RRP thirty-eight pound yeah. down twenty-five. They yeah, are yeah. so comfortable though, aren't they? They're nice, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, bro, you yeah. mentioned your head earlier, that you shave your head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that by choice or do you have a bad <laughs> hairline? Explain to me because I am you, losing my hair. So you're going to... So you're probably How old really? I'm 25. Okay. Yeah. 25. When, when are you 26? Uh, April. Oh, okay. You're like pretty much one year older than me. Yeah, I, I guess so. How, yeah. how old are you? I'm going to be 25 in February. Yeah, okay. Well, near enough. Right about yeah. So so, yeah. what's the situation with the, with the head? So you know what it means. You know what it is. Like, I'll just keep it simple. Is that my hair on top is thinning? Okay. It's thinning, so it's there, but it's thin. So like for example, you know like how people try to like comb it over and try to cover it up and stuff. That's which, what I do. Which is what I did in the past. Okay. Um, there was once so I was at uni at the time, um, and I was uh you know just shopping. And I was in I don't know what store, and then spotlights. I guess this is the this is the decision I made to shave it all off, and when I went in the mirror, I was like, it looked like I got no hair on because the oh. light went straight through, and I could, and I couldn't see the hair on top because no it was way. so thin. I, I, I and I'm like, that. what am I doing? And it was like I'm, I was trying to, I was genuinely trying to save it. I was just trying to save it. I was trying to style it up. I had that my big beard then, but I had to style it up. And I'm like, this is not gonna run. Like this is just bro. Run. This is what I, I like. Sometimes I just zipped it all off. But you know, sometimes <laughs> one one time, you know, my brother-in-law, he took a picture of the back of my head. Yeah. But he had the flash on. That's there you go. And you could see like I'm bored. I was like, oh my. Like, Where'd it go? Yeah. Bro, so uh, my hairline is like goes up. So when we went to Umar, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. That's when I really noticed it because they shaved your head. You can see your hairline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got like a McDonald's logo, bro. Yeah, so is mine. Mine's going further back, but that's going to like barb, like barbers who don't do shavers probably back in like when I my hairline. Was. No, it can't be because of barbers, bro. Your hairline, if your hairline's bad, your hairline's bad. No, but you know what it is? I used to get shave ups quite a lot, and they did used to push it back. Like some of them when I used to go to some barbers and stuff. But, but if you if you yeah. have hair follicles, there, it will go back hair there. Well, the thing is, like it's here. You, yeah, I guess you're right. Like it, can it I does see what your hairline looks like. No, nah, I'm not pulling off. Why? Nah, nah, you know what it is. Can you show me off camera then. Off camera, I'll show you. 
But mine's look it's at too I'll, show, I'll show you mine. <laughs> look, so like so I cover it up. Like yeah, see, I had it like yours. So I like comb it over like that and cover it yeah, up. Yeah, I had it exactly but like yours. If, like you, if you got that, uh, yeah. my wife's going to hate me for doing yeah. camera. Like, <laughs> yeah, don't, right don't do it yeah. if you don't want to. Like, you see, it's like Same, same exactly yeah. like yours. But, what, do you, but if you grew your hair up, if you grew your hair now, would it be like mine? It, it, it would. Or less now. The top will be, so the the back and the sides is calm, yeah, but the top is, is too thin. And I'm like, I'm trying to be that one uncle with three hairs trying to save it. Trying to uh, I'm not, not trying to be that guy. See, right now, so I'm trying to, right now I'm trying to save it, yeah. but it's like savable. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, because yeah, yeah. yours so, is quite thick. It doesn't look thin. Yeah, it's like, so me, it's, I just shaved it off. I mean, like, it's yeah. quite thin, bro, but it's not as thin as like, the, like, like Alhamdulillah, you, 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 I want to try, because bro, oh, yeah, I do yeah. not want to be bald in it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, do, I, don't, I, do not, I didn't want to say either, but you know what it is? I just, you know what it is? It was like, I, after that day, I was just like, let me do it and let me accept it. And then I was like, and it was a progression as well. Did the light just come on? No. But I, I, I do I I have the similar mentality. I'm thinking to myself, like, well, it's gonna happen. Maybe Embrace it. I should just embrace it. Bro, no, embrace it. Yeah, because I did. It actually helped my aesthetic as well. Like when I was going to the fashion stuff, like it just helped. But why do you not but but you said you embrace it, but you don't want to take your hat off on camera. Yeah, I just feel comfortable with the hat. It's just you know it is. And also like another thing as well, when you are in fashion stuff like that. People always look at the way you dress and stuff, and I'm just like, I try to make it. Just the hat is a part of the look and accessory. So okay, fair enough. And also, do, I do you really do you, would you do you leave the house without a hat, or do you feel embarrassed? Not embarrassed, but what's nah, the word? Ninety nine percent of the time, I'm wearing a hat, but then I'm not embarrassed to take it off though. Okay, that's like, I'll show the, I'll show the dome. Like if I need, or like if I'm doing <laughs> wudu, the show the dome. If I'm doing wudu, it's gonna go off. Like it's. It's one of the, yeah I don't know because I'm, I'm not 100 percent I it. can't do it just yet like okay so you're still us. like somewhat conscious of it yeah you know it is as well it grows so quick that it it doesn't look it doesn't look presentable oh the back and sides so yeah, you yeah, look yeah. a bit like a like it, like your back it just looks it looks like patchy kind mm. of thing so and also I do find it the one thing is I do find it a little bit of inconvenience because my hair grows so quickly I have to shave all the time so the hat just just helps like so you know I mean? like I did it today with the, with oh the you shaved today. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, how, how, did you, how do you shave your head? Um, I use a trimmer. I just bought a new trimmer recently. So you don't um, use a blade? I don't use a cotton throat. No, no, no. no but got, what about like a Gillette? Like a no, no. I use, you know those... Um, those oh, the, the disc ones? The disc ones, yeah. Oh, I use it on my head. Because that shaves it right down, right? Yeah, yeah, to like zero. You can get really like skin. You can get the skin basically. But it grows quick after then. So now I just get use the trimmer. I use like this and this T-liner. Like one of, one of the barbers use. The disc thing? No, the, the disc thing is like some random brand. I don't know. It's, but now I just use a trimmer. Like a like a regular trimmer. You know like what you get? You use like a regular trimmer? You know like when the barbers that you, they used to line line yeah. yourself up with and like line your beards and stuff? Yeah. I use that. For your head? For and my head and, them, and my line. Is like it machines. difficult to do that? No, nah, I've been doing it for years now, man. I've been doing it for a long, long time. But how do you, you get the back and stuff? You just, I suppose because you're just doing the whole head, it's easy. Yeah, so what, now what I mean, the order I do it in as I line up my beard first, line everything up, and then I just do my head last. Because, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I find it very intriguing. Oh, and I say, alhamdulillah, I save us so much money, man. Yeah, save so much money. You must save a lot of money as well. Yeah. Good investment. I did bought it recently. Have you ever considered a hair transplant? <laughs> so, uh, so uh, when I went to, uh, not saying I'm not saying you look bad, bald yeah, because yeah. I haven't even seen probably, but I'm sure you look great. Oh yeah, but no, I'm just thinking about myself, bro, because I have, I'm losing my hair. I went to because you know when I was talking about when I uh, when they do it, like, went Turkey. to Turkey. I went to Turkey. Oh, basically. Okay, yes, so when I was on the plane. It looked, you should see people with like red dots everywhere, no bandages, way. it looked mad. And people, there was like guys going in groups, like groups of three, groups of two. So I'm like, it's, it's one of the things where like, do you want to go? Let's go. Like it's one of those. Because it works, doesn't it bro? Yeah, it works, but I've done a bit, of, bit of homework on it. And. Islamically? No, not Islamically, oh. just, uh, just the process. Oh, okay. So it does work, but what I've come to find out is that, let's say for example, let's say you're like partially bald or whatever. So you've got some good hair still there but there's like bits, a lot of bits where they're not. You can do the transport, but what happens is sometimes when you do the transport, it weakens the good hair. Yeah. I spoke to a guy today. And then the good hair goes and you got to go again. I'm Bro, not trying to pay again. I spoke to a guy today who's had it done twice. No, I'm not trying to do that. And? Three bags. Yeah, he, but he had okay. it done twice, but he's going for a third time. That would, see, when I think of that, I'm like, I'm trying to go for one time only. If I do do it, and that's it. But I'm not trying to go three times. No, I'm never doing nah. that, bro. I would, I'd rather just shave it Same I think I mean and I also look, From I, an I, ego just, perspective as well But I feel so conscious bro Like I, I really feel, don't think I look good yeah. with the bald head Nah I, you know it is you, When you come to accept it And embrace it You, you don't think about it. Like f I feel like You know how you're talking about The industry Fashion industry Being egotistic all that kind of, I feel like if I did have hair mm. All I'm going to be doing Is playing around with it So I'm better off not doing it anyways I, I think about I don't sometimes. know if that's ego If that's just being conscious Because I feel like I'll be really conscious Of yeah. like having because do you know what else it is, bro? Like, mm. if my hairline was fine, then if I was bald, 
I'll be fine with it because like, you can still see like the dots, but where, 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 because if even- Are oh, you talking about like really short? Yeah, even if my hair grows yeah. like a tiny bit, you'll be able to see like the- Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, I'm exactly the same, yeah. Shape. Shave it, man. No way, not yet, but I'm going to try and make it last. And okay, cool. last. Right now, I don't even shave it yet. Okay, 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 I don't okay, think. Okay, okay. But <laughs> yeah. I'm 24, so- No, but, you, but if you're seeing- yeah, save as long as you can. Yeah. But when that time comes... But you know why yeah. I started using that German shampoo? Oh, the, the stuff doesn't work, man. Really? Uh, I paid eight pounds for that. I was shocked. I, I, did, I tried Eight pounds on shampoo? It doesn't work. After follicles, are like, as far as I know, as far as, far as the follicles are gone, are gone. There is some thing that my missus kind of found. I don't know where she found it. Um, it's like this specific oil, this natural oil, whatever. I don't know about oil. But you but know, my brother, she used Adam when it works. This. And I'm like, you why? know, I'll try it. You give me this tiny bit of hope. But I'm not that hopeful though. Listen to this, yeah. My brother in law, yeah, <laughs> he thought he was losing his hair and he's only like 18 or something, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So basically, yeah, he <laughs> was telling me this thing. He was like, look, you have to try this, it works over here. And he like, what is fry, it? He like scrambled, like, like, egg. Uh, he dropped an egg on his head, oh, yeah. mixed with like, some, the same thing, you mixed know? In some kind of like masala. Or I don't know <laughs> what he did, after, yeah. He was like, bro, you have to, you have to. I was like, I'm yeah. not doing I'm not that. Trying to put a, yeah, lunch, lunch he, my head. He, um, he said it worked. He's like, oh, my hair's come back. But I don't know, man. No, because you know the egg is like protein. That, that, that definitely strengthens there. But like if the follicles are gone. That's gone, what I'm thinking. I'm thinking cause the fo- because what it is, is that my issue is exactly what you're saying. Yeah. There's no follicles there. That's what I'm saying. If they're gone, they're gone. That's so when how you do the transplant and then you put it that's back. What I'm saying. Then you would use the shampoo, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Then you use the shampoo, yeah. Even the, even, the, even the German shampoo that I use, yeah. well, I finished it now, so I don't use it. I now just back to the normal one that's yeah, at the house. Yeah, yeah. But even that one that I was using, it could only help the hair that I had because mm. the places where I feel like my hair is going, yeah. I don't have follicles. Yeah, yeah, to, to, to make it look thick. To yeah, make yeah. it thicker, yeah. yeah. It's hereditary, man. I already know it's I don't know, but I, I think it's stress related. You know, people no, say it can that be a little bit. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. people say stress related and it's a bit like, that's a myth. But if that's but the case, then you'll be able to get it back, in my opinion. If it yeah, falls out, it should be because like I'm, I'm a very stressful person. Yeah, like. yeah. And I used to be when I was younger, man. You just saw when the pod when uh, before the podcast, <laughs> yeah. the sofa thing got cancelled. My my coffee was only <laughs> yeah. filling up half a mug. I was like, "What's happened? Everything's going wrong today." <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Because I'm, yeah, I was, very, I but know. that's that's quite odd because hmm. I know that it sounds weird to be talking about hair so much, but I'm just saying. I know. True, yeah, I do. It's your gone, hair you on your face grows so quickly. <laughs> And your arms and stuff, don't it? I'm I'm hairy on, yeah. Why? So why? What? So what? But just, just why are you? <laughs> you're just trying to make sense of it. No, it's, her- it's hereditary. Like all my, because as far as I know, it comes from your mum's side. The males on your mum's side, your family, and all my uncles and everybody, they all, they all, they all lost. They all shaved it off. They all mm. aerodynamic. Yeah, it's all gone. So, so how how you find studying studying Arabic? Yeah, alhamdulillah, it's good. How long have you been studying it now? Uh, so, f- alhamdulillah, I finished foundation like last week. Or less, yeah, when did, when did you finish starting? September? Yeah. So, October, November, December. You've been... St- oh, yeah, no, no, not September. It was start. It was... No, it was literally two months ago. Okay. Two months ago, yeah, foundation. We done... Alhamdulillah. Two so, months. now you're reading and writing fluently? Uh, well, I'm still still struggling. With but the, what, writing? With... Now, writing, not so much, but uh, it's more... A little bit of reading... And a little bit, it's, it's just a little bit of reading, right? I need to like just. Uh, but you know what it is, bro? Your reading is probably great and your writing is great. But yeah. what it is, is that there, Listening they, they, is they, they try and train you so that you can read even better. So what they do is slowly they start removing the harakah. Because the harakah you, is, what you're yeah. talking about now is not Quran. You're talking about like, because they, they start making you read. Because the Which idea is that you can read and understand Arabic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, re, like regular Arabic of books and stuff, not yeah. Quran. Yeah. So so now you, the way you're reading, you're reading conversational Arabic and they're, they're slowly removing harakah. That's what I mean, yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. hard, bro. It's hard. I'm, I'm picking up on it. But like, the thing is, that obviously, there's a lot of words, like especially first year, there's, Obviously, we're learning the process of how to construct sentences. But if we don't know the Arabic language and words, um, it's like we're gonna use Google and other sort of languages. Oh, we still read it as well. Yeah, and but there's no harakat on the on those words. So like, I'm just like I have to figure it out unless they say it. That's a, that's another thing. If I can mm. get good at listening, then if I can get it, if I can uh, get the audio to play, then I can like figure out where to put the harakat or stuff like that. So, but, but you know, know what, bro? On, honestly, yeah, the out. There, our, our teachers used to say to us like because yeah. we used to say stuff like how do you know like because there's no harakat how do you know what the word is meant yeah, to yeah. be like yeah, yeah. and they used so to always standing. say like it will just come to you like you'll just you'll yeah. just start clocking the pattern it's like it's like, it's like when it's like with a, I don't think of the example like in English the words can be modelled up but you yeah. don't know what the words mean and, and now, now yeah. we 
we're starting to understand the pattern. Yeah. So yeah. like I remember I think it was like I think I read the word like Yunki Nuni or something. Yeah. I can't remember know if I'm saying it right. <laughs> but which basically means impossible. Yeah. And I remember reading that without had a curse. But you just you just clicked. And I pronounced it right. Yeah. I don't know if I pronounce it right now. And then so eventually I think you start realizing like you know if the if it you yeah you just start realizing the patterns yeah. I think I don't know it's weird it'll, it'll come in time inshallah yeah inshallah yeah. man I, I I recently went through like a phase like for a lot like I'd say from September mm. to like November bro like yeah, yeah. two straight months <laughs> yeah. of studying um I was in like this like block like I couldn't get my head around what we were, what they were teaching us yeah. And so like understanding the method and when that clicks, I could, I could I'm waiting it. for that. I'm waiting for that. I'm and trying it, to learn that. But randomly, like two weeks ago, just it just all hit me like a train. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> you just look at words. Bro, I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> give, me some, like, give me Arabic menu. I'm me. good. Oh, <laughs> I just doing everything. Like, because bro, because yeah. I kept saying like, bro, I kept messing up on the, on the stuff we learned in foundation. Wallahi, I'm doing that now a little bit. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm here, like, I'm thinking like, Hold on a second, but why is that like an... I was like saying to Only, I was like, yo, Only, what's a verb again? Yeah. Like, and we learned that in foundation. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. now, I, and it just hit me because it's, I think what happened is one of our teachers mentioned something about um, like the feminine words ending with a term of water. Yeah. And then uh, because of that, mm. you like change the following word and you add like a term at the end of yeah, that. Yeah, it right. changes the following words. And like I that. just like every time I saw Literally. a term of water at the end of the word, I, I was so confused. I was like, why? Like You're I, asking I, why. That's another thing yeah. as well. They're like, don't ask why. Just learn what you're doing now. Why comes later? Yeah. Why comes later? yeah. And now it's starting to click me. So yeah, yeah man. Because the, gra the, gra the, the grammar and stuff, that's that's answers the why. The basically. thing is, you have to put your trust in the, in the teachers there because you can yeah. see in cases like, Hamza, we were talking about Hamza earlier. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's like, bro, Allah that Allah kid is like a long better like G. 16. Yeah. Is it? Bro. Well, I didn't he's that. young and he's Allah a child Allah genius. Allah Allah he's the Allah first Allah person Allah. I met as well when I came in for my um enrollment thing. Yeah. He's the first person I like wow, spoke to. He's a genius. Bro. So Allah he Allah. apparently he what did he tell you that he started when? How? He he, he, he knew no Arabic he, when he started. Yeah, he knew no, uh yeah, or, or like uh, so yeah, he was telling me like he knew nothing. He did first year, but he did so, he excelled so quickly, like he skipped a year or two or something like that. Yeah, mad. So and now he's like, teaching at Badr. Yeah, now he's like st being like an assistant teacher. Or and like he's like 17. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know his age, but subhanAllah is... Well, he's very... But even in his secular man. studies, he's very clever. Really? That kid, bro. I have, you know what is? I haven't... You know what is? When yeah, we're at Badr and stuff, like we don't, we don't really have much time to catch up yeah. and, and get to know other brothers and stuff like that. Yeah, it's true, very much true, true. Going, to, going to get some little bit eaten pray Salah, come back, back yeah. you know and then most people have things commitments after are you grateful that you did brother yeah I'm ha do, Hamda you know what it is I remember there was a time where I got fed up I was just like and this is a lot of brothers can can go through this with like why can't I understand the language like oh, I need to know this and then you know it is when you make when you make a dua they, they get answered man like yeah. say over and over again. and then it, subhanallah I don't know if it is you mentioned it I think you mentioned it and then I did a bit of googling and stuff and I'm like, raw. it's literally not that far away from home. Where did, how no did excuse. I mention it? I mentioned it to you or online? I think it was online a while ago. It's maybe one of the, I think you said it in a conversation online. I was listening to something of, of yours. It might have been a podcast with Ustad Yahya. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, it was before then. Okay. It was before then. But I remember you said it because I was just, because you were mentioned that you were learning Arabic, but you wasn't actually saying it, uh, you know, to the, to the uh, online and stuff. And I'm like, let me just school. Let me just. He said this one word, brother. Let me find out what this is. And I heard it before. Where's brother? I'm like, and I was like, let me see transport link. Cause I'm like, if it's long, I'm not gonna go. I'm like, it's not that far from home. I got new excuses. And then I saw those shoes. I'm like, I got the money. I got new excuses. Then you know what? I'm gonna commit. I'm gonna do that. You know? do, you, do you drive there? No, no, no I get like public transport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you drove today. No, no, I got Uber to the to the. To oh, the that's what the traffic yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was kind of worried that when you said twelve fifty, I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna make it. But alhamdulillah. Yeah. The um, yeah, yeah. I either get Uber or like a, like so, a bus. Ha, so you get okay, so you get Yeah, far, no, yeah. Do, do you know what it was? Because at Train. the beginning, when the first like eight months I was at Badr, yeah. I didn't mention it at all because I didn't want to. Yeah, I wanted to be completely private. That's with what it. I mean. Yeah, that's why I don't. So I, caught, I picked up on it, and yeah. I'm like, let me let me rewind this. The back. reason I didn't want to want to know, bro, is because I I didn't want to mess with my intentions. Yeah, yeah. Realize the real thing. I, and on top of that, mm. no, it's not about you guys. My intentions, like if I'm constantly putting stuff out there. Like, I don't want people to... I don't want to be that guy that's like, oh, I'm doing this, now I'm doing that, now I'm doing this, now I'm doing that. And, I'm doing that. And, and people probably ask you things like, oh, do you know this, do you know that? It probably would uh, mess up with your studies and your learning as well. 
I try not to mention it too much. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I don't know. For some reason, I didn't yeah. want to. I was wanting to it to be private. And yeah, then yeah, of course. What happened is, it started just. Um, I think like we were spending a lot of time with Yahya and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think people started clocking. And I thought, um, if it comes up in conversation, I won't be shy to say it because. You feel a bit more confident. Yeah, my fear was that I would mention it like with the wrong intention and yeah, that's what yeah, it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. now that I overcame that phase and it, it naturally came out that we're trying to study Arabic language yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't mind as much because I know that my intention inshallah yeah. is not messed up yeah, because at the end of the day the, 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 your intention to do anything has to be on point that's and it, my man. intention genuinely was that I wanted to be able to understand I want to be standing in Tarawi and understand and, and by the way we I'm nowhere on that level yet. I still can't understand like of course. Arabic conversations yeah. like that. but it's nice to know that you're on that journey where inshallah eventually you can learn the Arabic exactly, language yeah. you can speak you can understand the Tarawi you can speak, understand the Quran yeah, you know when you go to stand in front of Allah in Yom Al-Qiyamah yeah, mm. there's this one thing that really scares me and it's that imagine Allah sent something down mm. from the heavens and it was the Quran yeah? Yeah. and we're on this imagine you're on this planet or you're in this life for yeah. 60 years bro yeah. and then you go to Allah and you're like oh I didn't read your book yeah. and that's what I was on that's what I was on bro like yeah, before Badr I couldn't really read the Quran properly yeah. you know what I mean so so um, this this is the uh, so that was like, but she's yeah. on it on a, on a, so on was that part of your motiv- that's good that you had that motivation so, see, so my motivation is I'm standing yeah. up a lot like, I'm standing up for a lot I'm like the book that you sent down yeah. out of my 60 years I, I accomplished this I accomplished this in the dunya, I accomplished yeah, this in the dunya. Yeah, yeah, but be, the book you sent down I didn't read it or the, further to that the book you sent down Maybe I read it, but I couldn't. I didn't understand it. Yeah, and it's like wow, like I'm not reading English translations. Actually, reading it that's in I'm the saying, way it should bro, be like, read. Yeah, you're on the planet for that long. Yeah, and it's like you didn't even like make effort to understand the book yeah. that Allah sent down. If you read it deeper, you could say it comes under excuse because it's like the the called. Uh, I was talking to. Uh, I think I was at a, a talk that Ustad Jamal was doing mm. in Central, and he was like, "Look how many Qurans there are on the bookshelf. Like it's just such a small book, but it's so much benefit. It's like." Yeah, it's only this big. Like, why am I not opening it? Like, it's mm. just not. It's not that much of a burden. It's not a burden. Like, why am I not opening it? Why am I sit- not sitting down and opening it and benefiting from it? Like, he did put it into perspective. This small book has this much. It's like, even a page a day. Like, you should be reading Quran a day and and putting that intention in mind. It's like, I don't know. It could be Shaitan. It could be Waswas. That's kind of like throwing us off intention. But it's true. Y- y- yeah. I remember yeah. the other day I was, I was speaking to Only and I was telling him like I feel a bit mm. stressed cause like work and this that the other yeah. and um, with all of that stress that came came with it um, it's weird because when you're feeling men- like mentally like strained yeah. you feel like doing anything or listening to anything is an effort yeah. and I remember on the second day that I felt like that so I, I spoke to Only it was only it was literally earlier this week uh, and the de- the first day I was fa- feeling like that like mentally like just like a bit of a struggle. Yeah. At the end of the day, I I, I was on the phone to Only, and the next day I felt like that. This I still felt like that. Mm. And so on the way home, I forced myself, and you shouldn't have to, but I forced myself. I just went onto YouTube. I typed in Sheikh Shareem. Yeah. Um, because I was never really into Sheikh Shareem's hesitation until I went to Umrah this past year. Yeah. But I, I typed in Sheikh Shareem. I just played whatever was there, and it's I think it was sort of uh, Maryam, but before Maryam it was something else. Yeah. And actually, the minute I played that Quran, the rest of my car journey oh, home, I was like, oh, yeah. just like, all yeah. that weight is lifted off my shoulders. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you might have to just force yourself to put the Quran mm. on or to read the Quran, knowing that you will feel better after. Yeah. But sometimes picking it up seems like the heaviest thing in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, which I, is weird, but I guess that's even, even doing wudu, just like, even if you're a stretch state, do wudu, like pray, and then see how you feel. Like obviously there's hadith, you know, like if you're angry, Sit down mm. if you, you still lay down, like uh, that's paraphrasing the hadith, but it should be our go to, and that's another thing. Also, Jamal reminded it's like this should be your go, whatever you need is in the Quran, man. It's in there. Well, how much of a blessing is it to have like Ustad Jamal and Ustad Yahya like around us? Subhanallah, man. man. You, know, you know what it is? It's, you know, it's nice, it's because they, they, they understand us. Bro. Obviously, I don't know how old they are, but they understand. Our class, they understand the lingo. They can, they, they, they very much. how old they are. They old in knowledge. Yeah, 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 but their knowledge is like uh, wealthy, yeah. and they, and they're so, they're so, and their character. Well, I, they sit there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but, but do, do you know what? Man, what's what's beneficial and and what's mad beneficial actually is that people like that mm. is how you bring people closer to the dean actually because yeah, of the like, character yeah. actually because 
you know someone like for example my brother yeah mm. Omar like Omar when he like Omar might be out and bump into like he recently went out and he bumped into a stage mail yeah okay right, right. Like, he bailed me straight away he was like bro I bumped into a stage mail and like his character like he he, he like like I was like, oh, stay, wait there. I'm gonna come to you. Yeah. And Ustad Jamal was like, no, 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 no. You stay there. I'm gonna come to you. Like, yeah. like, 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 like you're more worthy yeah, yeah, of yeah. me coming to you. Don't you right. move. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, my, yeah, yeah. And my brother's like, what? Bro, like that character, bro. Like they, they're so yeah, humble, humble actually, yeah. yeah. And it and comes from the Sunnah. They teach it. In, bro, in they teach. Well. They teach that. Ustad Jamal teaches us. Um, yeah. Tarbiya. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Achi, and that's not even part of the cri- I don't know if you told you, but nah, it's not, not part, part of the cri- cri- He does it extra. Achi, so she's I, like so sick. But but, but but then when I get that I phone know. call from my brother, yeah. But you, you don't understand how nice that makes me feel because I'm like that's bringing him closer to Allah. Yeah. Because he's bringing me and he's saying, bro, like his character is so beautiful. Mm. It makes you think like, look at how the people of like the like of Islam are like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm on the other end of the call like. Wow, that's impacting someone. You want to be around these people so much. Yeah. That small act actually is impacting people so much more right. than me trying to sit someone down and say, "Look, boom, 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 boom." I'm not. I'm yeah. not belittling knowledge. Actually, we yeah. have to oh, have knowledge. Yeah, of course, we absolutely. Have to. Yeah, absolutely. But um, my point is actually that we should never belittle mm. those characteristic traits actually yeah. where you, when 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 you have a guest you treat yeah. the guest like a king actually. you're like you're saying like not you, obviously some people consider them the little but things but they're actually right bro like you should be treating yeah. your guests like with honor yeah 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 and yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. kind of stuff that they teach and because bro now bro yeah, if you right. come into the office and i feel embarrassed because i haven't treat, i told i haven't treated you right at all nah, man, no, you bought man. me food which is very embarrassing <laughs> no, no, very like, embarrassing that's not how it should be but my point is, let's say I was a good host, yeah, <laughs> and you came to the office. No, you are, yeah, you are, you offered me a coffee, alhamdulillah, like you and know, say that you. you uh, but but, but let's say, for example, you was like not a practicing Muslim, or you was not a Muslim, mm. yeah? yeah, and you came to the office and you were treated well by the person. Like, you'd walk away like with a, with a good impression. You know what, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, what yeah, is, yeah. Like, And if I, and then if you know that the thing that drives me to be like that is because of my deen, yeah, bro, that is. Wallahi, Amazing. Yeah. You know, is that that's another thing I think people don't take into consideration, and I think it goes back to like a little bit of what I do is that, you know, I look Muslim. I need to, I need to represent. Is he the well, Maghrib already? Oh, he must be bringing us. Yeah, you know, oh. you know, um, like the way I, the way I look, like you know, for example, my beard, for example, I went, I actually shaved it off a couple of times just because of my intention, like that. That's how deep I took it because how you're saying like how we how our character is and how we represent. Like I can have an argument with someone, but all they can see me is I look at this angry Muslim and that. Like so. You know, it's like reflecting and be like, what's the best thing to say? What's the big, best thing to do? I feel like we're all accountable somehow of how we represent the uh, the religion and stuff. So like how you're saying when you bring a guest in, I think inside the home and outside the home, like it should still reflect. Like I, know, I remember I was talking about when you're talking to somebody, you look at them, face them, like all this kind of, which is from the sunnah. So it's like, it's beautiful, man. It, go, it goes, I know it is like, I, again, all the stuff that I'm trying to do, I'm trying to bring that in. Like how can I incorporate that in what I do? Because there's only going to be Benefit and and they're the ones that are teaching it, you know. Alhamdulillah, so Allah is a blessing from Allah. Allah he is really is man. Bro, Zahid, Jazakallah khair for joining the podcast. Oh, it's been yeah, amazing. I, I, I was saying to Nate before the episode, before you came today, and yeah. I mentioned before that I don't know how this episode is going to go because sometimes yeah. you have someone as a guest mm. and um, <laughs> you're. You're very intrigued about them, um, yeah. and with you, I knew you. Of I mean, you have known each other for the last couple of years, but we have yeah. never sat down and spoken. I like spoke, that. yeah, and yeah. So yeah. I don't really know, you know, um, if, chance, if, if yeah. getting a conversation out of you is going to be like dragging one out. Or yeah, yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. And both, honestly, we've had such a lovely chat. I've had, I found out so much about you. Humble, I've learned yeah. so much about you as a person, Humble, yeah. um, and I hope you have too. Likewise, yeah, 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 of course, uh, it's man. been amazing, man. I'd love to have you back on Fresh Your Garden Definitely one day. So I'm local, do. man. I'm local to you, local to here. So, Jazakallah khair, man. I appreciate it, and. Yeah, thank you for jumping on, man. No, wicked, man. Barakallah,